Hello everybody, this is Harrison Heinrich here. Well, today I want to talk about something that's rather daunting and, and finicky in our society, and that's letting go. How do we let go? It's always been like that. It isn't a new thing. People, as long as there's been people, have had trouble with letting go of things and arguments. But I want to read a few Bible verses and then tell you a little bit about my story of tonight's an una uh, action and where I had to pick my battles and um, just know when it's time to let it go. And so I like John eight thirty two. it says, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Isn't that powerful? That truth is God's word. It's that salvation, that act of dying on that cross that set us free. We don't need to be bound by who's right, who's wrong. You know, he said, she said, because we've been given this opportunity through God's word and through his actions to rise above that. Another verse I like is, um, is that a Proverbs 29, 11, and it goes, fools <clears throat> give up, give vent to their rage, rage, but the wise being calm in the end. So instead of foolishly going into our rage and just like two of those dinosaurs with the helmet heads just smashing themselves together, that doesn't, that doesn't fix anything. That's just the more you say, you're putting more emphasis on it and making it an issue when it doesn't even need to be an issue. Uh, I like Psalms 94 to 19 that says, when anxiety was great with me, your consolation brought me joy. Uh, I, I really like that, you know, when, when we're, cause anxiety is something I deal with. And I know a lot of people who do too. And it's just this blanket of darkness that weighs you down and, and just takes over your heart. It commandeers your heart. Um, and the consolation in Jesus and our savior is that's the key to, to letting things go. We act like he would act, not like how we would act or anybody else but how he would act, and that's living holy. Um, so I'll tell you about tonight. So I uh, I don't drive. I can't drive because I have seizures every now and again, and my cognition's really low, meaning that I don't notice things as quickly. So it would be dangerous for me to drive right now. But I want it's Thursday night, tomorrow's Friday. I want to go home on the weekend and do what I want to do. But unfortunately, I can't because I don't drive and my parents both work. And so for a while we fought about it. I was like, let me Uber, let me get a cab or something. And they said no. And so then I left the conversation, collected my wits, screamed my head off to a good confidant friend of mine. And then I came back and I apologized. I said, I should not have acted that way. It's your money, it's your time. You know, you're, the fact that you didn't come and get me at all is enough. So I'm sorry, and um, I don't, I, if they are, if you're watching this, either my parents said, and I am very sorry. I didn't mean to be a brat or be manipulative or cruel. I just, I just wanted to come home, and I was, and but my my means were that of a cruel person and unfair to them when they work all week, and I, they asked me for just a few extra hours to stay on campus. That's um. Not cool. Not cool, Harry. <laughs> so, but I've been forgiven. I don't think about it anymore. It's not even on my radar. It's just something I noticed happened tonight. And uh, I just, I trust the Lord. I just trust that I don't need to worry about all that little finicky, little petty stuff that goes on. I can just focus on loving him and loving the others. And that's all we're called to do. And so I love you all. Um, Thank you for watching this and hope you have a good day. Bye.